God for you joining us again for YPWW. Let we pray that God has been good to you all week long. And let's begin with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for today. Thank you for this night. We thank you for your word. We thank you for who you are. And God, we ask that you reveal your word to us, God. Give us a mind to apply this lesson to our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And thank God. Amen. So tonight, we're on lesson number six, the purpose of dating. Amen. And, you know, this is a real interesting lesson and it's very needful for the, for especially for young people when it comes to the subject of dating. And this lesson is one of the most interesting ones because uh, I believe it'll be one of the most interesting ones we have this quarter because uh, dating is something that isn't directly addressed in the Bible. But the Bible is clear when it comes to uh, how you ordain marriage and how you ordain sex. But there is no statement in the Bible that says uh, thou shall not date. But us as saints of God, we know that there are some principles when it comes to this subject. So the first thing you got to do, you got to define what dating actually is. And, you know, that's why a lot of people shy away from teaching this or talking about it, because young people now have a different kind of mentality uh, when it comes to dating than older adults might have. You know, a lot of people even have a problem with the term dating. You know, so they use the phrases like going steady, getting to know each other, uh, talking to each other. And one of the most popular for my age group or me when I was growing up was that we go together. You know, you go with each other. So whatever you want to call it, tonight is the purpose of dating. Whatever you want to call it is a right and a wrong way to do it. And that's what this lesson is trying to teach us on tonight. Now, it's in, in today's society, people think in the mindset of, you know, you're single, you're dating, or you're married. You know, single means you're not seeing nobody, you're not dating nobody, you ain't going steady. Dating or going together, that means you involved with somebody, you know, you're exclusive. You know, it's just supposed to be me and you, but you ain't married. You know, so, but nowadays people look at it like they married, you know, without the paperwork, but you still getting the benefits of being married, which is wrong in the eyesight of God. Uh, a lot of things that people do now when they dating, you know, you don't hundred, a hundred percent support the person that you date, like they're your spouse. So, you know, the world has changed the perspective on marriage. And so now they are trying to get it to a point where dating is just the end game you know so you know while dating or going steady or talking or whatever you call it it might not be wrong you know some stuff that dating couples do nowadays is damaging in the long run you know if you just look at a lot of the people or you know you can take an examination of your own life and you see that, you know, just dating person to person, going person to person, you know, it causes a lot of tears, causes a lot of shame. You know, you get unexpected babies and a lot of broken marriages because people went into dating without understanding what could really happen. And when two individuals, a man and a woman, decide to be exclusive, you know, that's when stuff changed. They begin to look at the relationship as more than just companionship, you know, now. I want to be for, uh, emotionally fulfilled. And now it's not just friendship. I want to be romanced. I want to feel love, you know, so emotions start to take over. And the problem with that is that he, these emotions and feelings that come, people try to build relationships off debt. But godly relationships are built on more than just emotions and feelings and sex and looks. So dating the world the dating, the way the world presented, you know, it ain't preparing you for marriage. It's really preparing you for divorce because, you know, it's just a bunch of short, short term relationships, you know, and somebody get emotionally involved. They may even get married, but most of the time they got to deal with baggage from the past, you know, like baggage from past breakups, betrayal. Uh, you know, you get bored with that person because they ain't like somebody else. You know, jealousy start to take over. So if you fall in and out of love all the time, 
when God does bring your spouse your way, you're going to have to work through all of that baggage and all of that pain and past hurdles. So, what's the biblical viewpoint of dating? You know, although, again, even though it don't directly address dating, there's some principles that we supposed to live by. And our lesson text tonight is 1 Corinthians 7, 1 and 2. Our memory verse is 2 Corinthians 6, 14. And first and foremost, let's just go to, I want to throw in Colossians 3, 1 through 4. And it says, if ye, did, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those seek those things which are above, which are which where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with Him in glory. So the word of God is blessed. So first and foremost, we need to encourage everybody to be saved. Amen. Because we have to set our affections on things above. When it comes to this thing about dating, you know, uh, if you ain't saved, you ain't going to live by godly standards. So Paul reminded them that we've been raised, you know, from the dead with Christ. So when we, us being new creatures, our affections are supposed to be set on things above, on heavenly things. That's the first and foremost when we're going into this thing. So we can't uh, conform to the world. We got to hold those godly standards, you know, and so in, if you go on in Colossians 3 and uh, read verses 5 and 6, it encourages us, you know, we got to put to death those things that belong to the world, such as sexual immor immorality, premarital sex, you know, you know, that means more than intercourse, by the way, that means more than sex. You know, it means any, any kind of sex outside of marriage, any kind of sexual acts outside of marriage. We got to put it away. And we can't let people fool us. All acts of, of, of sex that's outside of godliness, you know, is sin. So, want something to get sexual pleasure or gratification outside of marriage is wrong. So, we got to put it to death. And see, the principle here is that we're supposed to be living for Christ. So, a pure, single-minded life to pursue. We're supposed to be pursuing him and seeking his purpose. So, Anyways, I threw that in, and you may be asking why, why, how, how that apply to dating. So, first, you got to think about why you dating. You know, why you dating? You got to also think about how you doing it. First off, if dating or talking to whoever you talking to, if it's taking you away from God, then you know it's wrong. If you dating for sex or to satisfy your flesh, for money, for just to feel love, then you are in danger. Amen. So our lesson text is 2 Corinthians 7, 1 through 2. It says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. Amen. So Paul tells us that it's the promises and the fear of God that should motivate each and every individual to want to walk with God. So we got to be motivated to have a clean walk. So when we come upon this subject of dating, we don't want to put ourselves in no uh, uncompromising or compromising positions. You know, so we have to cleanse, you know, ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh. And that's talking about those physical acts, you know, the physical things of, of, of evil in the spirit and in the physical. So what people do on the outside it's just a result of what's on the inside of them. Again, dating ain't wrong. But dating the wrong way, it leads people to committing and having to repent for the same sins over and over and over again. In Matthew 15, 18 through 19, again, it, it encourages us and lets us know it ain't about what you're saying. You know, it's about what's in your heart and what you're doing. You know, it ain't enough for us to ask God to clean us, but the word let us makes it let us know that. It's a challenge to us that we got to be involved. You got to want to live right. You got to want to do right. So we got to have a, con a consecrated walk. You know, we got to perfect holiness in our walk. And when we get to our memory verse, 2 Corinthians 6, 14, which is a very familiar passage when it comes to this term and this subject of dating. It says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion have light with darkness. So, if dating is designed for us to find a husband or a wife, then 
don't one of the most important things is not to try to get somebody when you know they ain't saved. You know, probably people nowadays they probably say, "Why not?" You know, the God can save them when we get married because if you say you can't allow yourself to be yoked with somebody you don't have or you shouldn't have nothing in common with anyways but the physical. So when you do that, when you yoke yourself up with somebody that ain't saved, then you putting yourself in bondage. That's not happiness. That's lust. And you putting yourself in bondage and we'll never be able to reach our full potential in God when you tied to somebody that ain't saved. So it's got to be a difference between your lifestyles. You know, you can't walk with somebody unless you agree with them. So there shouldn't be nothing in common between us and somebody that ain't saved. So, you know, we don't, we don't supposed to put on the world or compromise or take down just because we like this person or I want to be with this person. In your mind, that's who you want. But you can't let down your standards just so you can be with them. Romans 13 to 14, it tells us, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. We don't compromise holiness to get the man or the woman that we want. In verse 14, in our memory verse, it says, what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And the answer is none. We supposed to be different. And God blessed me one time in my studies. And every time 2 Corinthians 6, 14 comes up, I remember when God took me to Deuteronomy 22 and 10. And it makes it even more clear for us. Deuteronomy 22 and 10 says, thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. Now it's a small verse, but it's very clear because the ox and the donkey, they two different animals. The ox was clean, the donkey way. You know, they had two different natures. The, and to yoke them together, that was asking for trouble. So it's more to being unequally yoked than marrying or dating the wrong person. It also means that we ain't supposed to be walking with the world. We don't supposed to have the same mind as the world. We supposed to be holy people and separated people. In 1 Corinthians 15, 33, it says, Be not deceived, evil communication corrupt good manners. So walking with the world and with people who are encouraging you to date this person, do this, you know, you got to test drive, you got to see what it's like before. You don't need to be around there. They go back to us cleansing ourselves, letting go of those people. 2 Timothy 2, 22, it says, Flee also you for lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So we have to get away from that stuff that drives you and we got to turn to God. That stuff that'll lead you astray, that stuff that'll cause you to want to lust. You got to again ask yourself, why do I want to date this person? Or why do I want to date, period? You know, is, is it my feelings? Is it my emotions? Am I just attracted to this person? Because remember, this whole quarter we've been pushing home the fact that we are sexual beings. So yeah, you're going to be attracted. You're going to see somebody that look good to you. you. You may want them and stuff like this, whatever. But if we say God want us to wait on him, God want us to stay holy, God want us to stay pure. So we have to seek God. And we have to not worry about who we going to marry, who we going to date, because God got that under control. You just trust him, live holy, live saved, live sanctified, live separated, and he will do it for you. Now, you know, just to wrap up this brief summary of the lesson, because it's a deep summary. We can, it's a deep lesson, and you, we can spend all day here. But I wanted to just give you all two examples of dating. I mean, well, when it comes to this term dating or how God is in control. And it comes from the Old Testament. Uh, first, you remember Isaac. You know, Isaac didn't meet Rebecca until she was brought to him in Genesis 24. So he never dated. You know, he never dated. And yet God gave him the best that he had for him. And his marriage was a blessed one. Now, on the flip side, you go look at Jacob. Jacob, he fell in love and he went after Rachel in Genesis 29. Now, he was tricked because of his feelings. He just moved off his emotions. And when he did that, he ended up with two wives. So, you know, if people would just date, talk, or whatever you want to call it, God's way, then people would experience the satisfaction and happiness that God has provided in marriage and in feeling the love of the opposite sex. So, yeah, dating ain't directly addressed in the Bible, but us as saints of God, us as people of God, we have to encourage each other, young people and older saints, that there is a right and a wrong way to do it. Amen. So we thank God for you joining us on this lesson. I'm excited. I thank God for this lesson. 
because there is a difference between Christian dating and worldly dating. And it's something that we need to be teaching our young people and teaching people everywhere. Amen. So let's give you question number. Matter of fact, I just said it, but I'll give you question number one. What is the difference between Christian dating and worldly dating? Amen. So let's end with a word of prayer, God. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for who you are, God. We thank you, God, for this lesson. And God, we ask that it go forth and it be fruitful. We pray for every backslide that you reclaim them, strengthen the saints, God, and we reclaim the, the backslider and save the sinner, oh God. And every unspoken prayer request, we ask that you meet those needs even now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Amen. We are the Bethel Church of God in Christ, Plain Dean, Louisiana. Thank God for our pastor, Pastor Donald Douglas, our first lady, first lady Douglas, my wife, to all of the subscribers. Amen. Hey, this lesson here, I encourage you, excuse me, to share this lesson with your young people. Just not this video, but take time to go over this lesson. Amen. Because this is an important lesson especially for the young people today that they know that there's a right and a wrong way that you don't need to put yourself in a position where you know somebody will take advantage of you uh hang out with godly people get godly counsel amen but i, I just thank god for this lesson thank god for all of you if you're not a subscriber subscribe to the page or to the channel or share this channel we thank god for all of our new subscribers we hope that these lessons and our services are blessing you and continue to pray for us We'll pray for you. God bless you. God keep you. And we'll see you next week.